Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this operations research lecture series, the topic for today's lecture is simplex method. So, this is a general linear programming problem. The objective function is maximize z equals to 3x1 plus 2x2. There are two decision variables. We can solve this problem using simplex method. Now, the question is, in our previous lectures we have already seen that we can solve this problem using graphical method, then why do we even need to use simplex method for solving the linear programming problems? Well, if we look carefully, in the objective function we can see two decision variables, x1, and x2. In this case we can solve it with graphical method, but if there is three decision variables in the objective functions, for example, if in the objective function it is given 3x1, plus 2x2, plus or minus something x3, then in that case there will be three decision variables, then we will not be able to solve the problem by graphical method, and we will have to solve that problem using simplex method. Take for example, in this question we can see a general linear programming problem, the objective function is, maximize, z equals to 3x1, plus 2x2, plus 5x3, here, we have three decision variables x1, x2, and x3, so we cannot solve this problem using graphical method, and thus we have to solve this linear programming problem using simplex method. Now, the problems are given to us in a general form, and to solve these general linear programming problems by simplex method, at first we have to convert them from general form to standard form. After converting them into standard form we can solve the problems by simplex method. So, let's see at first how to convert from general form to standard form. Now, to convert from general form to standard form, the first rule or first step is, to check whether the objective function of the given linear programming problem is maximized, or minimized. If the objective function is to be minimized, then we have to convert it into a problem of maximization. So. How to do that? Here we have taken two questions. Both the problems are in general form. Let's convert them from general form to standard form together. Here we will write the standardized linear programming problem or standardized LPP form. So, in this first problem, the objective function is in maximized form, so it is a maximization problem. In this case, we don't have to change anything, and we can write maximize z equals to 3x1 plus 2x2 in the standard form. Again, in this second problem, we can see that the objective function is in minimized form, so it is a minimization problem. In this case, to convert it into standard form, we have to convert this minimization problem into maximization problem at first. So, in the standard form we will write this minimize, z, as maximize, z dash over here, then we give the equal to sign. Now, we will multiply the whole expression on this side of the objective function by minus 1. So, on this side we will have, minus 3x1, minus 2x2, minus 5x3, in the standard form. So, this was the first step or first rule, and both these problems are now in maximize form. Now, the second rule or second step is, to check whether all the decision variables are greater than or equal to 0 or not. So, in this first problem, we can see that the range of the decision variables x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. And, in this second problem also, we can see that the range of the decision variables x1, x2, and x3 are greater than or equal to 0. Now, since all the decision variables are greater than or equal to 0 in these two problems, so we don't have to change anything, but, Assume that if the decision variables were given as x1 greater than or equal to 0, and x2 unrestricted, what would we do in that case? So, if any of the decision variables are unrestricted, for example this is a given equation, 2x1, plus x2, less than or equal to 4, and for this equation suppose here it is said that, the decision variable x1 is greater than or equal to 0, and the decision variable x2 is unrestricted. So, in this situation we would rewrite this given equation, we would write this in equation as, 2x1, then give this plus sign, now since x2 is unrestricted, instead of this x2 in the equation, we would write, 
x2 dash minus x2 double dash less than equal to 4. And beside the new equation we would write decision variables x1, x2 dash and x2 double dash greater than or equal to 0. Now, since all the decision variables are greater than or equal to 0 in these two problems, so we don't have to change anything. So, that was step number 2. We have checked that all the decision variables are greater than or equal to 0. Now, in the third rule or third step, we have to convert all the inequality constraints by using equation, and for that we will use slack or surplus variable. So, in this first problem, here we can see two inequalities or less than equal to signs, in these two equations. Now, if we were solving this problem by graphical method, then we would simply replace these two inequalities or unequal signs by using equal signs, and convert them into equations. In graphical method we didn't need to use any slack or surplus variable to convert the inequalities into equations, but in the simplex method, we have to use slack or surplus variable, let's see how to do this. So, for the first equation, we will write, subject to, x1, plus x2, equals to, 4. And, for the second equation, we will write, x1, minus x2, equals to, 2. Now, here we can see less than or equal to sign, that means, this left hand side is smaller than the right hand side, and to make both the sides equal, we have to add something or some variable to the left hand side or the smaller side, this variable is called slack variable, so, on the left hand side we added the slack variable, plus s1. And, over here also we can see less than or equal to sign, that means, this left hand side is smaller than the right hand side, and to make both the sides equal, we have to add slack variable to the left hand side or the smaller side, so, on the left hand side we added the slack variable, plus s2. So, s1 and s2 are slack variables, we will write here, s1 and s2 are slack variables with cost 0, the cost of slack variable is 0, so, the cost of s1 and s2 is 0. Now, since we have introduced the slack variables s1 and s2 in our equations, we also have to write s1 and s2 in the objective function over here. So, in the objective function we add, 0 s1, plus 0 s2, as we know that the cost of slack variable is 0, we have written 0 before them. So, this is how to introduce slack variable. Now, similarly in this problem, for the first equation, we will write, subject to, x1, plus 2x2, plus x3, then leave some space, and write equals to, 430. For the second equation, we will write, 3x1, plus 2x3, then leave some space, and write equals to, 260. For the third equation, we will write, x1, plus 4x2, plus x3, equals to, 420. Now, on the first case, here we can see less than or equal to sign, that means, this left hand side is smaller than the right hand side, and to make both the sides equal, we have to add slack variable to the left hand side or the smaller side, so, on the left hand side we added the slack variable, plus s1. Similarly, on this case also we can see less than or equal to sign, so, on the left hand side or the smaller side we added the slack variable, plus s2. Now, on this third case, here we can see greater than or equal to sign, that means, this right hand side is smaller, and the left hand side is larger than the right hand side, and to make both the sides equal, we have to subtract something from the left hand side or the larger side, so, on the left hand side we subtracted the surplus variable, we write minus s3. Now, here s1 and s2 are slack variables, and, s3 is a surplus variable, we will write here, s1 and s2 are slack variables, and s3 is a surplus variable with cost 0, as we already know that the cost of slack and surplus variable is 0. Now, since we have introduced the slack and surplus variables s1, s2, and s3 in our equations, we also have to write slack variables s1 and s2, and surplus variable s3 in the objective function over here, so, in the objective function we write, 0s1, plus 0s2, plus 0s3, 
as we know that the cost of slack and surplus variable is zero, we have written zero before them. So, when we have less than or equal to sign, we are adding slack variable to the smaller side, and when we have greater than or equal to sign, we are subtracting the surplus variable from the larger side. So, that was the third step. Now, in the fourth rule or fourth step, we have to check whether all the bi are positive or not. Here, bi means all the values on the right hand side of the inner equations. We have to check whether all the values on the right hand side are positive or not. And if any value on the right hand side of any inner equation is negative, then we have to multiply that whole inner equation by minus 1. So, on the first problem, here we can see that, on the right hand side we have, plus 4, and here we have, plus 2, since, all the values on the right hand side of these two inequations is positive, we don't need to multiply these inequations by minus 1. Similarly on the second problem, here we can see that, on the right hand side we have, plus 430, here we have, plus 260, and here we have, plus 420, since, all the values on the right hand side of these three inequations is also positive, we don't need to multiply these inequations by minus 1. So, finally we have converted this linear programming problem from given general form to standard form. And here also, we have converted this linear programming problem from general form to standard form using these four simple and easy steps. Thank you for watching this video, if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Academic Gain Tutorials on YouTube, and share in your learning circle.